Okay, now let's talk about some possibility theorems or some theorems. Well, you may wonder why do we need them? Um, well, simple, um, particularly for my students who are going to be answering some quiz questions, uh, hopefully in a few weeks. Um, well, I may give you a game and, and ask, well, uh, find the core allocation or is the core allocation empty? Uh, so to answer those questions, you know, one way, which is a very long way, possibly, if there are more than two or three players, you know, try to figure out what the core allocations or core uh, payoffs are, sort of solve the entire, you know, inequality, system of inequalities, etc. Or alternatively, look at one of those or refer to one of those theorems and say, here's the answer or, or you see what I mean? So the theorems are always useful, uh, particularly if you are looking at complicated game uh, because they give you a direction uh, to, for, for the answer at least. So let's talk about our theorems. But before that, I have three theorems. And I have three important definitions because we're going to use those definitions in our theorems. So the first one is called veto player. Um, well, we call player I a veto player if the worth of this coalition, grand coalition minus I, is equal to zero. So what does that mean? That means if you take player I out of the grand coalition, well, then the value of this coalition is zero or the worth of this coalition is zero. Um, in a sense, player I is a very key player. Uh, if you take him out, uh, well, there's nothing to share uh, for the remaining players. All right. So in that sense, it's a very, very important player. So we call them as veto player. The second definition is convexity. So for any game, we call it convex if the following inequality holds for any set, uh, you know, uh, coalitions S and T. Well, what is this inequality? It says whenever I join uh, two coalitions S and T, well, the worth of this new coalition, a, a bigger coalition, is greater than or equal to uh, the value of the coalition S plus value of the coalition T minus value of the or the worth of the coalition if uh, there are some agents uh, that are uh, sort of appearing in both coalitions, sort of the people in the intersection. All right, so convexity is stronger than super additivity. If you remember super additivity, uh, it was sort of related, right? Vs union t is greater than or equal to Vs plus Vt. That was the definition, but it was true for any st subset of n such that s intersection t is empty. So this was true for any um, uh, disjoint uh, coalitions. So obviously if they're disjoint, so that's zero. So uh, that means if a game is convex, well, then it has to be super additive. But the converse is not true. I mean, there can be games which are super additive, but not convex. For example, the ice cream example. Uh, it is super additive, right? But it's not convex. Why? Well, consider the coalition uh, player AB and then player, I don't know, uh, AC. So, uh, so this is S. And this is T. So what is uh, S union T, which is A, B, C? What is the worth? Remember, uh, they can buy 1000 gram of uh, ice cream. Is this greater than or equal to V of S, which was 750, if you remember, plus V of T, which was again 750, minus uh, the intersection, uh, V of A. Well, what was the V of A? It was zero. So 1000 is not greater than or equal to 1500. So therefore, uh, the ice cream example fails to be convex, though it is super additive. Okay, so convexity is stronger than super additivity. Uh, but convex games are very, very useful, as you will see in the following theorems. 
All right, the third and the last definition. Um, we classify some games as simple games if the worth function takes the value 0 or 1, okay? So it's very binary. Uh, for any coalition, the worth function takes the value 0 or 1, and uh, for the grand coalition, it takes the value 1, okay? Um, well, I mean, it may sound weird, but actually the voting games or it, sort of many coalitional games in sort of political environments do actually have this uh, property because all it matters is winning the majority. And so once you get the majority, the value is one. But if you don't get the majority, the value is zero. And there, there, there might be different ways of getting majority. All right. So it makes sense in a, why in a voting environment these games are sort of uh, important. Okay, so the first theorem, in a simple coalitional game, G, the core is empty if and only if there is no veto player. Hmm. So if you have zero one type of game, okay, a simple game, and if there's no veto player, well then you can be sure that the core uh, is empty, all right? Once again, if there's no veto player, well, then the core is empty. Well, what if there are veto players? Um, for example, one political party is huge and you cannot win majority without uh, the sort of participation of this party. Well, if veto players exist, well, then the core consists of all payoff vectors in which the non-veto players get zero. Huh. What does that say? That says, remember, the veto players are very critical, guys, because if you exclude them, uh, the payoff to be shared by the remaining players is going to be zero. So therefore, if, uh, if there are some veto players, maybe one, maybe two, maybe more than that, well, the thing is the core is going to, I mean, there's going to be some payoff vectors in the core, but what do they look like? Well, all the payoff vectors in which uh, non-veto players receive zero uh, are in the core. So because the non-veto players are, they're not important. The veto players are the key players. You can basically ignore the rest. So if you're looking for core allocation in such games, uh, with the existence of veto players, you can simply uh, say, you know what, the veto players, non-veto players, I'm sorry, should get zero, all right? And so you have to divide the surplus, the V of N, among the veto players. If there's only one veto player, it basically will be sort of the um, um, dictator, all right? It's gonna get the everything. If there are two veto players, well, then uh, they're going to share them any way they like. Uh, all of them are going to be sustainable, uh, I'm sorry, consistent with core, okay? So that's a very, very important theorem, but it speaks only for simple coalitional games, unfortunately. All right, so the next theorem speaks about convex games. So every convex game has a non-empty core, which is good to know, right? I mean, um, are, I mean, you're looking for some core allocation, sometimes solving a linear, um, a system of linear equations is not easy. So you basically make a guess, educated guess and verify. But the thing is, if there exists no core and then search will never stop. And so you see what I mean? So knowing that some games may have empty core, or which kind of games have non-empty core is important. So if your game is a convex game, just verify this first, well then don't worry, there's at least one uh, core, uh, sort of a payoff vector in the core. Okay, the third theorem says every convex game, the Shapley value is in the core. It, this is even better. So you don't really have to make a guess and verify approach, just use the Shapley value because the Shapley value is going to give you um, a, a stable outcome. If you remember uh, the ice cream example, we calculated the Shapley value and we showed that 
and we argued that it is not stable, so meaning it's not in the core, well, that makes perfect sense because the ice cream game is not convex. So don't forget this theorem is true if the game is convex, okay? Um, so that's it.